And I want to welcome everybody here this evening uh, to the house of Jacob where we are keeping one of God's feast days. This is the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the last feast of the year. And it lasts in total for eight days. And the Lord said in his word that we are to feast for seven days, and then on the eighth day, we are to have a solemn assembly. So that's what we are going to do. Uh, this evening, we are going to deal with this feast, and we're going to just uh, show you what this feast is really all about. All God's feasts are about his plan for the salvation of man. This feast is about the final harvest. In fact, let me give you the title of the feast. It is the Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of End Gathering, because it is called by both names. Sometimes in the Bible it's called Feast of End Gathering. Uh, mostly it is called the Feast of the Tabernacles. So, but what it is really about, it is about the gathering of the people of God for the final time. So we're going to kind of show you in the scriptures that. And we want to begin in Leviticus chapter 23. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Leviticus 23 and we'll begin reading at verse 1. I don't know if everybody can hear me out there. I don't, I, I don't really hear myself, So, but uh, hopefully you can hear me. So now uh, Leviticus chapter 23, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. And we're going to kind of shorten this, this lesson a little bit. But hopefully when we are done, that you will understand what this feast is about, because that's what's important, that you understand really why the Lord set this feast up in the first place. We're going to begin reading at Leviticus 23, where you find all of God's feast days listed. Leviticus 23 and began at verse 1, 23 and 1. Go ahead and read, bro. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, uh -huh. even these are my feasts. Now, first thing we find out that we are dealing with the Lord's feast here. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the people, Concerning the feast of the Lord, and he says they ought to be proclaimed as holy convocations. And again, he says these are his feasts. Read. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. Uh -huh. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Go ahead and read. These are the feasts of the Lord uh -huh. and holy convocations which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Now again, the Lord says, these are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. I'm going to deal with the one that is, uh, that is in season today. Let's skip down to uh, verse 33. Go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. speaking to the children of Israel, saying, the fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Now, our Lord said here, fifteenth day of the seventh month. And this is the fifteenth day of the seventh month. According to God's calendar, according to the lunar calendar, it is the fifteenth day of the seventh 
month. And he said, you shall have a feast of tabernacles for seven days. Go ahead and read. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. Uh -huh, and this is the first day. And that is why we're here this evening obeying this commandment that God gave unto us. Holy convocation. First day. Go ahead and read. You shall do no servile work therein. Uh, and then the Lord said, don't do any servile work therein. Keep reading. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now that you don't have to do anymore. Because when Jesus came and died, that ended the animal sacrifice. But that did not end these feasts. Because we're going to show you uh, that... Uh, these feasts ought to be done forever throughout all generations. So now again, he says that uh, ye shall have a holy convocation and do no servile work therein. Read. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. And on the eighth day shall be a holy. So in this feast really lasts for eight days. But as I said earlier, you ought to feast seven days. But then on the eighth day, you shall have a solemn assembly. I didn't see any separation from the Feast of Tabernacles and the eighth day. Go ahead and read, brother. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh-huh. It is a solemn assembly. And you shall do no servile work therein. Well, on the eighth day, then we are going to do a solemn assembly. But for these first seven days, we are going to feast to the Lord. Skip down now to uh, 39. Go ahead and read it, bro. Also on the 15th day of the seventh month, uh -huh. when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Read. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and uh -huh. on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. He said on the first day a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. So these are what the Bible referred to as high Sabbaths. Go ahead and read. And ye shall take unto you, the, and ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, mm -hmm. branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees and willows of the brook. Uh -huh. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Now the Lord said you ought to rejoice for seven days. And that's what we are going to do. Say, so, you know, you take these bowls and, uh, and, and then you ought to rejoice for seven days. Go ahead and read. And you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. Uh -huh. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Now the Lord said it will be a statue forever in your gen So every generation, doesn't matter what generation you happen to be in, then you are supposed to keep this feast. Seven days you are supposed to keep it. And then on the eighth day, a solemn assembly. Go ahead and read, brother. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Uh-huh. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelite born shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So now that is good. So now we are dealing with this first day of this Feast of the Tabernacles. Lord said, have a solemn assembly. That is why we are here, having this solemn assembly. And then the Lord said, you ought to rejoice. You ought to feast for seven days, and then on the eighth day, have a Solomon Assembly. We're going to deal with the Solomon Assembly at the right time, on the eighth day. But now the Lord said, Rejoice, and that this shall be done forever throughout your generations, even in all of your dwellings. Let's go now uh, to Nehemiah chapter 8. And we'll begin reading at verse 9. Nehemiah 8. And we'll pick it up at verse 9. Now what had happened here is, Israel had gotten away from the Lord. They had started to not serve God as he commanded them to serve him. So the Lord had them delivered into bondage down in Babylon. 
Now they would be there for 70 years, then they would return. And when they returned, they started to search out the scriptures that they might understand the law of the Lord. Start reading at chapter 8 and began reading at verse 9. Go ahead and read. And Nehemiah, which is the Tatarsha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Uh -huh. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Go ahead and read. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Uh -huh. neither, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Go ahead and read. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy, neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth. So now what they had done is they had started to search out the law. They had been in Babylon in bondage for 70 years. And when they came back, then they started to search out the law. Because the thing with Israel, it sort of gotten away uh, from the law. Go ahead, continue reading. And all the people went their way to eat and uh -huh. to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they understood the words that were declared unto them. Uh -huh. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests the Le and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. Because they wanted to understand the words of the law. That's right. Because they truly had gotten away from it. And that was really the reason that God had sent them into bondage down in Babylon. So they had gotten away from it. Now they are back in the land and they are searching out the law. Go ahead, continue reading. And they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses. They found written in the law that the Lord commanded by Moses. What did they find? Read. That the children of Israel should dwell in booths uh -huh. in the feast of the seventh month. Well, what feast is it that they should dwell in booths? It was the feast of the tabernacles that they should dwell in booths. Now they've searched out the law. Go ahead and read. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, uh -huh. saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to uh -huh. make booths as it is written. Now as we read in the book of the law, it was written that they should do that. So they did that. Go ahead, continue to read. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, uh -huh. every one upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God and in the street of the water gate and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. Go ahead. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths uh -huh. and sat under the booths. For since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, unto that day, had not the children of Israel done so, and there was very great gladness. Go ahead and read. Also day by day, uh -huh. from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God. Uh -huh. They kept the feast seven days. And they kept the feast seven days. Go ahead and read. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. And then they feasted seven days, and on the eighth day, there was a solemn assembly. We're going to deal with this eighth day in its season. But they feasted as it was commanded in the law. Seven days, and they rejoiced before the Lord. That's right. And then on the eighth day, they had the solemn assembly. Let's go now to John chapter 7. And we began reading at verse 1. I'm going to show you that Jesus kept this because the commandment was that it was to be done throughout all generations in all of your dwellings. So now they did it after they came back from bondage. Now I'm going to show you that they even did it in Jesus' day. In fact, Jesus himself kept his feast. Let's go to uh, John chapter 7. Begin reading at verse 1. 7 and 1. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, uh -huh. but he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Go ahead. 
Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. Now it says here the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. So they were still keeping it. Even after you got over into the New Testament, they were still keeping it. And we're going to find that Jesus himself would keep this feast. Keep reading. His brethren therefore said unto him, uh -huh. Depart hence and go, into Judea, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Now skip down to verse 9. Go ahead and read. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Uh -huh. But when his brethren were gone up, then when he also went up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Well, you know, his brothers, they went up. Then Jesus himself went up. Go ahead and read. Then the Jews saw him at the feast and said, where is he? Now, what feast are we dealing with? The feast of the tabernacles. That's what we are dealing with. Read it. And there was much murmuring among the people uh -huh. concerning him. For some said, he is a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceived the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Uh -huh. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Now about the midst of this feast of the tabernacles, Jesus went up into the temple and he even taught. So now they did it in the old. After Israel came back from bondage, they still did it. Then Jesus himself even did it. So they were doing it even in the New Testament, they were doing it. And we can show you, which we will a little bit later, they will still do it after the Lord returns. So the Lord said forever, throughout your generations, in all of your dwellings. And that is exactly what he meant. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 16. And we'll pick it up at verse 13. 16. And verse 13. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. Now he said you shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. Go ahead and read it, brother. After that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine, uh -huh. and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant. Now he's saying you shall rejoice in your feast, you and your son, your daughter, your manservant. Go ahead and read. And thy maidservant. Read. And the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates. So you know what it says? You know you should rejoice in this feast for seven days. And that is what we are going to do. We're going to rejoice in this feast for seven days. Go ahead and read, brother. Seven days shall thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God. Read. In the place which the Lord shall choose. He said, in the place that the Lord shall choose. Go ahead and read it. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. Uh-huh. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God. In the now, the Lord said three times. In a year shall all the males appear before him, and he's going to tell you what they are. You ain't got to wonder or try to figure out what they are. All you got to do is read it. Right. In fact, we're going to read it twice. Because right here he said three times in a year shall all the males appear before the Lord. He's going to tell you what they are. Read it. In the place which he shall choose. In the place that he shall choose. Read. In the feast of unleavened bread. Now he say you do it in the feast of unleavened bread. Go ahead and read. And in the feast of weeks. And in the feast of weeks, which is known in the New Testament as Pentecost. So now you got the unleavened bread. And you got Pentecost or feast of weeks. Go ahead and read. And in the feast of tabernacles. And the feast of tabernacles. That is it. Three times. And he told you what they were. You ain't got to figure it out. Ain't no more after that. First one is the unleavened. The next one is the Pentecost. And after that comes the Feast of the Tabernacles. Go ahead and read. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. And then he said, do not appear before the Lord empty. In other words, you are supposed to come before the Lord with some offering. Read. 
Every man shall give as he is able, uh -huh. according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he have given thee. Now, let's go to, uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 23. And we began reading at verse 14, because this feast is called by another name as well. And the other name that it is called by is the Feast of End Gathering. Start reading at Exodus chapter 23 and began reading at verse 14. 23 and 14. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Now the Lord is even saying it again. Three times in a year you shall keep a feast unto him. And again, he is going to tell you what they are. Read. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Keep the feast of unleavened bread. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month Abib. Uh -huh. For in it thou camest out from Egypt and none shall appear before me empty. And then again the Lord said, None shall appear before him empty on these feasts. Go ahead. And the feast of harvest. Uh, and the feast of harvest. Again, that is Pentecost. You know, it's called harvest. It is called Pentecost. It is called the feast of weeks. That is the second one. Go ahead and read. The first fruits of thy labors, uh -huh. which thou hast sown in the field. Read. And the feast of end gathering which is in the end of the year. And the Feast of End Gathering. This is our tabernacle. Right. Which is in the end of the year. There are no more feasts after this. This is the last one of the year. It's for eight days. You feast seven days. And then on the eighth day, you have a solemn. That's what the Bible is telling you. I ain't telling you that. All you got to do is read your Bible. This is the last feast of the year. There is not another one after that. Go ahead, keep reading. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field, uh -huh. three times of the year all thy males shall appear before the Lord thy God. Three times in a year all the males appear before the Lord God. Now, it is called the Feast of Tabernacles. It is called the Feast of end gathering. Let's go now uh, to uh, Exodus chapter 35. And we'll pick it up at verse 21. 35 and 21. Even again, we're going to read here where the Lord calls it the feast of end gathering because that is what it is really all about. It is about the last harvest. It is about the gathering of the people of God. That is what it is pointing to. Exodus 35 began reading at verse 21. Go ahead and read it, brother. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, uh -huh. and everyone whom his spirit made willing. Go ahead. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation uh -huh. and for all his service and for the holy garments. Go ahead. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing hearted, and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold. And every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet. And no, I'm sorry. That is, uh, it's Exodus 34. And 21. I'm sorry about that. 34 and 21. Okay, brother, go ahead and read it. Six days thou shalt work, uh -huh. but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In earring time and in harvest thou shalt rest. Go ahead. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, Pentecost. Go ahead and read. Of the first fruits of wheat harvest uh -huh. and the feast of end gathering at the year's end. And the feast of in gathering at the year's end. This is the last feast of the year. You can't find any more written. God didn't command that you keep any more after this. Feast of end gathering, feast of tabernacles, the last feast of the year. Feast seven days, and on the eighth day, have a solemn sin. That's what's written in your Bible, okay? So we're going to just leave it right there because this feast 
is about the final harvest that will take place at the coming of the Lord. That is why it's called in gathering. In gathering means to gather in. Let's go now. Uh, Matthew chapter 13. We're going to pick it up at verse 24. Because that is when the final harvest will take place. This feast is pointing to the final harvest. And the final harvest will take place at the coming of the Lord. That's when it's going to take place, people. Start reading at, uh, at Matthew chapter 13. And began reading at verse 24. Matthew 13 and verse 24. Okay, brother, go ahead and read it. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, uh -huh. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Read. And while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Uh -huh. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Uh -huh. For whence then have it tares? He said unto them, an enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, Was thou then that we go and gather them up? Uh -huh. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Go ahead and read. Let both grow together until the harvest. Let them both grow together, it says, until the harvest. This harvest that he's talking about here is the gathering of the people. That's what this harvest is about. And that is what this feast of the tabernacles is really pointing to. The final harvest of the people that will take place at the coming of the Lord. He says, so now just let them both grow together until the harvest. Go ahead and read. And in the time of harvest, I, uh -huh. will, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares. And bind them in bundles to burn them. Read. But gather the wheat into my barn. But now he said gather the wheat into my barn. Who is the wheat? The wheat is the righteous. The tares, they are the seed of the wicked one. Because they're going to ask him. Explain this parable unto us. They came and asked him and the Lord is going to explain it to them. Skip down now to uh, verse 36. Go ahead and read. Then Jesus sent the multitude away uh -huh. and went into the house. Go ahead. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Uh -huh. He answered and said unto them, Read. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Uh -huh. The field is the world. Read. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Uh -huh. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Read. The enemy that have sowed them is the devil. Go ahead. The harvest is the end of the world. And then the harvest, it says, is the end of the world. In other words, at the coming of the Lord. That is when the harvest is going to take place. At the coming of of the Lord. The harvest is the end of the world. Go ahead and read. And the reapers are the angels. And the reapers are the angels. Read it. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, uh -huh. so shall it be in the end of this world. Tares. That represents the children of the wicked one. They're going to be burned in the fire. The wheat. That is the good seed. Go ahead and read. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, uh -huh. and they shall gather out of his kingdom in all things that offend, Read. and them which do iniquity. Go ahead. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire, uh -huh. they shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Go ahead. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Uh -huh. Whoever ears to hear, let them hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to treasure hid in the field. Well, that is good. So now, the wheat, that is a good seed, and they're going into the kingdom at the time of the harvest. But the tares, they are the children of the wicked one, and they will be burned in the fire. But what time is the harvest? The harvest is at the end of the world, people. That's when the harvest is going to take place. That's what this feast, this last feast, is dealing with the final harvest of the people of God. Let's go now to uh, let's go now to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. We're gonna pick it up at verse twenty. Fifteen and verse twenty. 
clinic. Okay, 15 and 20. Now, Lord, when he returned for the harvest, he's going to deal with two groups of people. One group will become immortal, and the other group will remain mortal. Start reading at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we'll begin reading at verse 20. 15 and 20. Go ahead and read it, brother. For now is Christ risen from the dead uh -huh. and become the first fruits of them that slept. Read. For since by man came death, uh -huh. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So now again, we're looking at the coming of the Lord. That is what we are looking at, at which time the harvest will take place. Go ahead and read it. For as in Adam all die, uh -huh. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. When? But every man in his own order. Go ahead. Christ the first fruits. Uh huh. Afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming. You know, Jesus was the first fruit. And after was those that belonged to him at his coming. Let's go now. Skip down uh, uh, to uh, verse 35. Go ahead and read, brother. But some men will say, Uh huh. How are the dead raised up? Go ahead and read. And with what body do they come? So now, the dead that we are dealing with here. We are not dealing with all of the dead. We are only dealing with those that died in Christ. That is the dead that we are dealing with. He said, Christ the first fruits, afterwards, those that belong to him at his coming. Because he's going to do something with these righteous dead that he's not going to do with the rest of the dead. Not at this time, anyway. Skip down to... Uh, did you read verse 35? Yes. Skip down to verse 42 then. Go ahead and read. So also was the resurrection of the dead. Go ahead. It is sown in corruption. Uh-huh. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown a corruptible body, one that will die and decompose. In other words, it goes in the ground, a corruptible body, but it is raised an incorruptible body. Keep reading. It is sown in dishonor. Uh -huh. It is raised in glory. Read. It is sown in weakness. Uh -huh. It is raised in power. Read it. It is sown in natural body. It is raised in spiritual body. Uh -huh. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So now it is raised a spiritual body. Sown a natural body, raised a spiritual body. And we're going to find out, brother, that it is sown a mortal body and it will be raised an immortal body. Skip down to uh, verse 49. Read it. And as we are born the image of the earthy, uh -huh. we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Read. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Flesh and blood. We are dealing with bodies here. That's right. Flesh and blood bodies will not get into the kingdom of God. The ones that will get into the kingdom at the coming of the Lord are those that God will give a immortal body. Read. Behold, I show you a mystery. Uh-huh. We shall not all sleep. Read. But we shall all be changed. And we're not dealing with everybody here. We are only dealing with those that died in Christ or those that are alive in Christ. Not everybody. Only those. Read. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Read. At the last trump. At the last trump. Go ahead and read. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Trumpet gonna sound, dead will be raised incorruptible. Go ahead and read. And we shall be changed. Uh-huh. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. You know the dead gonna be raised incorruptible. The living will be changed. The righteous, let me clarify that. The righteous living and the righteous dead will be raised incorruptible. Righteous living will be changed. Go ahead and read. And this mortal must put on immortality. Now he's saying, and this mortal must put on immortality. The righteous, when the Lord returns, they will get an immortal body. Not everybody going to get it at that time. The righteous living going to be given that body and the righteous dead will be given that body. 
This will happen before the Lord's feet even hit this earth. Did you finish that 53rd verse? Yes. Let's go now to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we'll pick it up at verse 13. Because we want to make the distinction here between what's going to happen with the righteous when the Lord comes and the rest of the people. Start reading at uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and begin reading at verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 4, we're going to pick it up at verse 13. 4 and 13. Okay, brother. Go ahead and read. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep. Now, we are dealing with the dead here, and we are dealing with the righteous dead, even those that will be raised at the coming of the Lord. You know, we, we just read that the righteous dead and the righteous living will be changed at the coming of the Lord, and they will be given... An immortal body. Go ahead and read. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now, that immortal body that they are going to get, they will be given that body even before the Lord's feet even touch this earth. Go ahead and read, brother. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, uh -huh. even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Not everybody, but only those that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Go ahead and read. But this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Read. That we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. You know, like Paul said to Corinthians, you know, it's going to be some righteous living when the Lord comes. And there will be the resurrection of the righteous dead when the Lord comes. That is what he's saying to the Thessalonians here. Right. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Not everybody, but the righteous. Go ahead and read. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, uh -huh. with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. The Lord going to descend from heaven with the shout, voice of an archangel, Trump of God. Go ahead and read. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Go ahead and read. Then we which are alive and remain uh -huh. shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Wait a minute. Then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up with the righteous dead in the clouds. Go ahead and read. To meet the Lord in the air. And look at what it said. To meet the Lord in the air. In other words, before his feet even hit the ground, these people will be raised and they will be given an immortal body. Not everybody, only the righteous. Go ahead and read. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And we're going to ever be with the Lord. And no, you will not ever be in heaven with the Lord. But you will be on this earth. But my point is that the righteous living and the righteous dead will be raised and given an immortal body before the Lord's feet even hit this earth. That is one group that the Lord is going to deal with. Now, there's a second group that the Lord will deal with at his coming. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 21. And we'll pick it up at verse 20. So we're going to deal a little bit with the nation of Israel and not just with the nation of Israel here because we're going to find out that they will be scattered and that they will be gathered as well at the coming of the Lord. Start reading at Luke chapter 21 and begin reading at verse 20. Luke 21 and verse 20. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. 
And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, uh -huh. then know that the desolation thereof is not. And this is Jesus telling them about uh, when they see Jerusalem surrounded with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Go ahead, continue reading. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, uh -huh. and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Now skip down to verse 24. Go ahead and read. This is what would happen to the real Israelites. And Jesus just prophesying here what would happen to them. Go ahead and read. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And then they will fall by the edge of the sword, meaning the Israelites. Read. And she'll be led away captive into all nations. And then they would be led away captive into all nations. Now this happened about 70 A.D. This came to pass. Go ahead and read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles uh -huh. until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. In other words, Israel would not be back in the land until the Lord come. Because at that time, that will be the fulfillment of the Gentiles. So they'll be scattered into all nations until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And Jesus is going to gather them, and he will gather them at his coming. Let's go to Luke chapter 13. And we'll pick it up at verse 34. Luke 13 and 34. 13 and 34. Okay, brother, go ahead and read it. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets uh -huh. and stonest them that are sent unto thee. Now he's dealing with Israel here. Jerusalem is Jerusalem that killeth the prophets. Go ahead and read. How often would I have gathered thy children together? And look at what the Lord said. How often I would have gathered thy children together. Go ahead and read. As a hen doth gather her brood on her wings, uh -huh. and ye would not. And you would not go. And he's, he's going to really uh, tell us when it is that he's going to gather them. Read. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Your land meaning. Go ahead and read. And verily I say unto you, uh -huh. you shall not see me until the time come when you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And he said, you're not going to see me until the time come when they said, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. That is when... He's going to gather Israel at his return. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now and look at it at uh, Jeremiah chapter 23. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. So we got the Lord coming. And he's going to raise some righteous dead, change some righteous living, give them immortality. Now we find out that he will gather natural-born Israelites at his coming as well. Because they would be scattered. And they would remain scattered until the coming of the Lord. Start reading at Jeremiah chapter 23. And pick it up at verse 3. 23 and 3. Okay, brother, go ahead and read it. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them. Well, you know, uh, Jesus said they would be scattered into all countries, didn't he? Now we are reading about the time when he would gather them out of all countries wherein they have been scattered. Go ahead and read. And will bring them again to their foes. Uh huh. And they shall be fruitful and increase. Now I'm going to bring them again to their foes. Where their foes in their land. Read. And I will set up shepherds over them uh -huh. who shall feed them. Read. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Go ahead and read. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Uh -huh. And the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Now, this is a physical people that the Lord is going to gather. At his coming. You know, we look at the saints. They were changed even before the Lord's feet hit this ground. And they were given immortality. Now, this is a natural born people here, physical people that will be gathered at the coming of the Lord. Right. And they will not 
be given immortality at that time. That's why I said two groups of people that the Lord is going to deal with at his coming. The ones that he will give immortality to and then this natural born people, physical people that he will gather. Read. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Uh -huh. and, Israel, and Israel shall dwell safely. Look at what they say. In his day, Judah will be saved. Israel dwells safely. Who is Judah and Israel? The whole nation of Israel. Go ahead, read. And this is his name whereby he shall be called. Read. The Lord our righteousness. Uh -huh. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven, whither I had driven them, uh -huh. and they shall dwell in their own land. You know, I'm going to bring them from all places where they have been scattered. The Lord said, and they are going to dwell in their own land. This too is at the coming of the Lord. They will dwell in their land a natural or physical people when the Lord returns. Let's go look at it again. Let's go this time to uh, Isaiah chapter 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 11 and 1. This feast, people, is about the final harvest, the gathering of the people of God. That is what it is about. That is why it's called in gathering, the last feast of the year. Start reading at Isaiah 11 and began reading at verse 1, 11 and 1. Go ahead and read. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, uh -huh. and a branch shall grow out of his roots. This is Jesus. Go ahead and read. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, uh -huh. the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Read. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Uh -huh. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Uh -huh. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. Go ahead. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth uh -huh. and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Now that is what he's going to do at his return. Now we're going to find out as well that he will gather Israel at his coming as well. Just read Revelation 19. It'll let you know this first, fourth verse it's talking about the coming of the Lord. Pick it up now at uh, verse 10. Go ahead and read. And in that day, there, uh -huh. sh there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. That is root of Jesse. That is Jesus as well. He is the root and the offspring of David. Go ahead and read. To which shall the Gentiles seek. Read. And his rest shall be glorious. And his rest will be glorious. That is the kingdom that he will establish on this earth at his return. Read. And it shall come to pass in that day uh -huh. that the Lord shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So now he's going to set his hand again the second time. Well, when was the first time? When he brought them out of Egypt. But this time at his coming, he will set his hand Again, the second time uh, to gather his people. Go ahead and read, brother. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. Read. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. And he's going to assemble the outcasts of Israel. Go ahead and read. And gather together the dispersed of Judah uh -huh. from the four corners of the earth. And he's going to gather Israel. And he's going to gather Judah as well from the four corners of the earth. So now. Again, we are dealing with the Lord gathering Israel from the four corners of the earth. A physical people that he is going to gather. Let's go now. Isaiah 56. Pick it up at verse 1. Not only will he deal with Israel, but he's going to deal with the stranger as well. Because I'm just trying to show you that the Lord is going to deal with with two groups of people at his coming. One will become immortal, and the other one will just be physical 
natural born Israelites and not just Israelites but it will be strangers as well that the Lord is going to gather at his coming. Start reading at Isaiah 56 and pick it up at verse 1. 56 and 1. Because this feast, people, is all about the harvest that will take place at the coming of the Lord. 56 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. keep ye justice and do judgment. For my salvation is near to come. Read. And my righteousness to be revealed. Uh-huh. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that live hold on it. Uh-huh. That keep up the cyber from polluting it, and keep up his hand from doing any evil. Read. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, uh -huh. The Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. So now he said, Don't let the stranger say that the Lord have separated me from his people. Don't deal a little bit here with the stranger. Skip down to, uh, skip down to uh, verse uh, 6. Go ahead and read it. Also the sons of the stranger. Also the sons of the stranger. Read. That joined themselves to the Lord. Now if they will join themselves to the Lord to serve him. Go ahead and read. And to love the name of the Lord. To serve the Lord and to love the name of the Lord. Read it. To be his servants. Uh-huh. Everyone that keep up the Sabbath from polluting it. Read. And take a hold on my covenant. Now he said everyone, even the stranger, if he keep the Sabbath from polluting it and take hold of the Lord's covenant. Go ahead and read. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Lord, so I'll bring them to my holy mountain. Go ahead and read. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Read. The burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Uh-huh. For mine house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Go ahead and read, brother. The Lord God, which gathered of the outcasts of Israel, said. Now, the Lord that gathered the outcasts of Israel said what? Go ahead and read. Yet will I gather others to him. Beside those that I gathered unto him. See what he said? Yet will I gather others unto him beside those that I gather. So Lord gonna gather Israel, and he will even gather the stranger as well at his return. These are physical people that the Lord is dealing with. And I'm gonna show you how I know that. Let's go to uh let's go to Exodus, uh, not Exodus, but uh Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Folks, I just want to try and make it clear here that this feast is about the gathering of the people of God when the Lord returns. Ezekiel 20, and pick it up at verse 33. 20 and 33. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. As I live, saith the Lord God, uh -huh. surely with the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. Go ahead and read. And I will bring you out from the people uh -huh. and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. See what the Lord said, I'm going to bring you out from the people and he's dealing with Israel here. And I'm going to gather you from the countries wherein you have been scattered. Go ahead and read. With the mighty hand uh -huh. and with a stretched out arm read. and with fury poured, poured read out. Read it. Uh-huh. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Well, Lord ain't taking Israel into the land when he gathered them from among the people, but he is going to take them into the wilderness of the people first. Go ahead and read. And there will I plead with you face to face. And the Lord said, I'm going to plead with you they are face to face. In other words, the Lord will be right here on this earth dealing with natural born Israelites there in the wilderness. Face to face. That means that the Lord is here, people. Read. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, said You know, the same God. way I pleaded with your father when I brought them out of the land of Egypt and took them into the wilderness, same way I'm going to plead with you, Israel. Go ahead and read. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. Uh-huh. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And then I'm going to cause you to pass under the rod, and I'm going to bring you into the bond of the covenant. Lord, going to take them there in the wilderness and plead with them there. Face to face, the Lord is saying here. 
a natural, physical people that he is dealing with. When is this going to take place? At the coming of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. And look at what the Lord said. I'm going to purge out from among you. And let you know he's dealing with a, 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 a physical people here. Bring them into the wilderness. Plead with them now face to face. Purge out the rebels from among them. This is at the coming of the Lord. When he came, remember, he raised the saints, changed the righteous living, gave them immortality. So that, this ain't them. This is a whole different group of people, natural born, physical Israelites. Read. And them that transgressed against me. Read. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, uh -huh. and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Look at what the Lord said. I'm going to bring them out of the countries where they sojourn, and they will not enter into the land of Israel. Go ahead and read. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And the Lord said, ye will know that I am the Lord. So now, we're dealing with two different groups of people that the Lord is going to deal with at his coming. The ones that he will make immortal and then a natural, physical people that he is going to deal with in the wilderness first at his coming. Then those that escape, he will take them on into the wilderness. Let's go now to... Uh, uh, our own into the land, rather. Let's go now. Ezekiel chapter 43. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. 43 and 1. 43 and 1. Because we're going to make this distinction here, people, so that you will understand about this feast. Because it is all about the gathering of the people of God. That is what it's about. The final gathering of the people of God because this is the last feast of the year. Start at uh, Ezekiel 43 and began reading at verse 1. 43 and 1. Go ahead and read. Afterward, he brought me to the gate even the gate that looketh toward the east. Uh -huh. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. Three. And his voice was like a noise of many waters. Uh -huh. And the earth shone with his glory. In other words, the Lord is on this earth at this time. You know, remember, he changed them people before his feet even hit the earth. But now the Lord is on this earth. The earth shone with his glory. Go ahead and read. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. Read. And the visions were like the visions that I saw by the river Chabar. Uh-huh. And I fell upon my face. Read. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect was toward the east. Now, this is the temple that the Lord is going to dwell in at his return here. But I'm going to show you, he's dealing with a physical people here. Go ahead and read. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. Uh -huh. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And then the glory of the Lord filled the house. Go ahead and read. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house. Uh -huh. And the man stood by me. Read. And he said unto me, uh -huh. Son of man, Go ahead. the place of my throne. And he said, Son of man, the place of my throne. Go ahead and read. And the place of the soles of my feet. And the place of the soles of my feet. Read it. Well, I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And look at what he said. Where well, I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel. Place of my throne. Place of the soles of my feet. Read it. In my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. Go ahead and read. Neither they nor their kings by the whoredom, uh -huh. nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. Read. And their setting of their threshold by my threshold. And the setting of their threshold by my threshold. So the Lord is on the earth at this time, and he's dealing with a physical peace. If you don't understand that now, you will. Go ahead, uh, continue reading. And their post by my post. He said the setting of their threshold by my threshold. Lord is on this earth dealing with natural born is right. And what time is this? At the coming 
of the Lord. Let's go now to uh, 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 Ezekiel 44 and pick it up at verse 9. 44 and 9. Because when this happens, when the Lord returns, he will reestablish the Levitical priesthood. Start reading at verse 9. Go ahead and read, brother. Thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. no stranger or uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary Go ahead and read. of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Read it. And the Levites that are going away far from me uh -huh. when Israel went astray, which went astray from me after their idols. Go ahead. They shall even bear their iniquity. Go ahead and read. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary. Now the Lord say, yet they will be ministers in my sanctuary. And I'm going to show you, this is a physical people that the Lord is dealing with here. These are not immortals. Right. These are physical people that the Lord is dealing with. Read it. Having charged at the gates of the house uh -huh. and ministering to the house. Go ahead. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them. And then they are ministering Unto the people there. Go ahead and read. Because they ministered unto them before the idols. Uh -huh. And caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Read. Therefore have I lifted up mine hand against them. Uh -huh. Saith the Lord God. And they shall bear their iniquity. Read. And they shall not come near unto me. To do the office of a priest unto me. Uh -huh. Nor to come near to any of my holy things. In the most holy place. He but, said in the most holy place. They will not come within there. Go ahead and read. But they shall bear their shame. And the abominations which they have committed. Read. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house. Uh -huh. For all the service thereof. And for all that shall be done therein. Read. And the priest, the Levites, the son of Zadok. That kept the charge of my sanctuary. When the children of Israel went astray from me. They shall come near to me. To minister unto me. And they shall stand before me. To offer unto me the fat and the blood. Saith the Lord God. Go ahead and read. And they shall enter into my sanctuary. And they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, that they shall be clothed with linen garments. Uh -huh. And no wool shall come upon them whilst they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. Read. And they shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. And when they go forth into the outer court, even into the outer court to the people, they shall put off their garments wherein they minister and lay them in the holy chambers, and they shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Now, I want you to notice here, we are dealing with a physical people here. That's what we are dealing with. Read that next verse. Go ahead and read it. Neither shall they save, shave their heads, uh -huh. nor suffer their locks to grow long. Read. They shall only pull their heads. Read it. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court. Go ahead. Neither shall they take for them wives or widows. Well, they said, neither shall they take unto themselves wives. The immortal beings, they do not marry, nor are they given in marriage. So we are dealing with physical beings here. That's what we are dealing with, flesh and blood beings. But when did the Lord do this? When did he gather them? At his coming. These did not become immortal at the Lord's coming. They're going to minister unto the Lord in that temple. So now the Lord gather the immortals at his coming. And then he gathered the flesh and blood beings at his coming. That's what we are dealing with right here. Finish that verse. We'll move on. Middle of 22. Read. Nor her that is put away, but they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel or a widow that had a priest before. So now that's what we are dealing with. This is all about the gathering of the people of God that will take place at the coming of the Lord. We just got a little bit more, you all. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 45. And we'll pick it up at verse 19. Ezekiel 45. Pick it up at verse 19. Okay, brother, go ahead and read it. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering and put it upon the posts of the house and uh -huh. upon the four corners of the settle of the altar and upon the posts of the gate of the inner court. 
And these people, they're going to be there in the land, and they will even be keeping the feast of the Lord there in the land. Go ahead and read. And so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for every one that error, and for him that is simple, so shall ye reconcile the house. Read. In the first month, in the fourteenth day of the month, ye shall have the feast of Passover, a feast of seven days, unleavened bread shall be eaten. And upon that day shall the prince prepare for himself and for all the people of the land a bullock for a sin offering. So now we see they're going to be doing the unleavened bread. And they're going to be doing the uh, Passover. Read. And seven days of the feast he shall prepare a burnt offering to the Lord. Uh -huh. Seven bullocks and seven rams without blemish daily for seven days. Read. And the kid of the goats daily for a sin offering. Uh -huh. And he shall prepare a meat offering of an ephah for a bullock and an ephah for a ram and a hen of oil for an ephah. In the seventh month and the fifteenth day of the month. Well, what is the seventh month and the fifteenth day of the month? Tabernacle. It is the feast of the tabernacle. This very one that we are doing right now. So they, Israel going back to the land. This is when the Lord returned and they will still be doing this feast of the tabernacle. And we're going to find out in just a little bit, not only will Israel be doing it, but everybody going to have to do this feast of the tabernacle. Go ahead and finish that verse. Shall he do the like in the feast of the seven days uh -huh. according to the sin offering, according to the burnt offering, and according to the meat offering, and according to the oil? Now, let's go to uh, 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 Ezekiel 47, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 21. So we're going to have flesh and blood Gentiles as well, not just Israel, but we're going to have flesh and blood Gentiles as well, and some even will dwell among Israel. Pick it up at uh, Ezekiel 47 and verse 21. Go ahead and read. So shall ye divide this land unto you according to the tribes of Israel. So now the Lord is dividing the land up according to the tribes of Israel. Go ahead and read, brother. And it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for inheritance unto you uh -huh. and to the strangers that sojourn among you well, he said now, it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance, and even the strangers that are among you. Go ahead and read. We shall begat children among you. Go ahead and read. And they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And they shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. Read. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the strangers sojourneth, there he shall give him his inheritance, save the Lord God. Go ahead. Going to 48. No, that's good. That is good. So now, you got flesh and blood Israel that will be gathered at the coming of the Lord. And the Lord said in Isaiah 56, others will be gathered beside those. So you got the immortals at the coming of the Lord. Then you got the flesh and blood at the coming of the Lord that will be gathered as well. Let's go now to uh, Zechariah 2. And we'll pick it up at verse 7. Zechariah 2 and 7. We got two more scriptures after this. Start reading at Zechariah 2. And began reading at verse 7. Brother 2 and 7. Go ahead and read it. Deliver thyself, O Zion, uh -huh. that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Go ahead and read. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations who uh -huh. spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. And the Lord said, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations. For he that toucheth you, Israel, toucheth the apple of the Lord's eye. Go ahead and read. For behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. Go ahead and read. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. Uh-huh. Sing and rejoice, O Lord of Zion. Read. For lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. Now he says, Sing, O Lord of Zion, I come, and I'm going to dwell in the midst of you. Go ahead and read. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. Now he said, Many nations will be joined to the Lord in that day. Go ahead and read. And shall be my people. And he said, they will be my people as well, but I'm going to dwell. Well, go ahead and read it. 
And I will dwell in the midst of thee. But he said, I will dwell in the midst of Israel. Go ahead, read. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto thee. Read. And the Lord shall inherit Judah his portion in the Holy Land. Uh -huh. And shall choose Jerusalem again. Now, we find it out again that you will have immortals that will be gathered at the coming of the Lord. And you have mortals that will be gathered at the coming of the Lord. All this, people, is what this feast is about. The last feast, the final harvest. That's what it is about. That is why it is called the feast of the end gathering. The gathering that will take place at the end. We got two more places to go. Let's go to uh, Zechariah now, chapter 14. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Zechariah 14 and begin reading at verse 1. This is the coming of the Lord again here. He's going to tell you that. And he's going to even tell you about this feast of the tabernacle that everybody's going to have to keep at the coming of the Lord. Zechariah 14, and began reading at verse 1. Go ahead and read it, brother. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil should be divided in the midst of thee. Uh -huh. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the woman ravished. Read. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, uh -huh. and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Read. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Now, if you read uh, Acts 1, it'll let you know this is Jesus that we are reading about, whose feet are going to stand on the Mount of Olives, at his return. Go ahead and read. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Read. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach into Azar. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Uh-huh. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. And then the Lord going to come, all the saints with him. Skip down to verse 9. Go ahead and read. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. And then the Lord will be king over all of the earth. In that day, one Lord, name one. Read. All the land shall be turned as plain from Gibba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate until the place of the first gate, until the corner gate, and from the tower of Penaniel until the king's wine presses. Go ahead. And men shall dwell in it. And men will dwell in it. Go ahead and read. And there shall be no more utter destruction. Uh -huh. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And then men going to dwell in it. And there will be no more destruction. Jerusalem will be safely inhabited. Now he's going to tell you about this feast of the tabernacles that everybody will have to keep at his return. Go ahead. Well, skip down to uh, 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 verse 14. Go ahead and read it. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. Go ahead and read. Gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. So you're looking at it again. You're looking at flesh and blood, mortal beings dwelling here at the return of the Lord. Go ahead and read it, brother. And so shall be the plague of the horse, uh -huh. of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents read. as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. You know, all nations came up to fight against the Lord. And then it turns around and said, it will come to pass that all nations that came up to fight against the Lord are going to have to go up to Jerusalem to worship the king and keep the Feast of the Tabernacles. And it means just that. All of them going to have to go up. Look at what the Lord says will happen to them if they don't go up. Go ahead and read. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto uh -huh. Jerusalem to worship the king, go ahead. the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Now the Lord said they do not come up upon any family that do not come up, there will be no rain. Go ahead and read. 
And if the family of Egypt go not up Read. and come not that have no rain, there, sh there shall be the plague where with the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Uh -huh. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the, to keep the feast of tabernacles. Look what the Lord said. This will be the punishment of Egypt or of any people that do not come up to keep this feast of the tabernacle. Let's go now to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14. But you're looking at it. When is this going to happen? At the coming of the Lord. That's when it's going to happen. When the Lord came, he changed some to immortal. That's one group. Then there was flesh and blood people remaining. The Lord going to gather them. He going to gather the nation of Israel, even the stranger. They will have their opportunity to get immortality. But for a time, they will just be flesh and blood beings. The gathering of the people of God. That's what this feast is about, people. The final gathering of the people of God. The final harvest. You know, we read in Isaiah that when Israel be gathered, the second time. Well, when was the first time they were gathered? First time they were gathered when they were brought out of Egypt. But the second time is when they be gathered out of all countries wherein they have been scattered. What time will that happen? At the coming of the Lord. Let's go now and read this. Because I'm always compelled to read this. Because we may have visitors in the house and they may wonder how we can stand up and read the Bible, then turn right around and start drinking wine. Because most have been brought up in a church where it is taught that drinking is a sin. That is not the teaching of the Bible. You know, God speaks against being a drunkard. He do not speak against drinking. So now even at this feast, even those three feasts that God mentioned, that we read about, twice we read about, three times, that all males had to come up to keep these feasts and even to rejoice before the Lord at these feasts. He's saying that... Uh, if you're so, so lusted for some wine or strong drink, he's just going to let you know it is okay. Deuteronomy 14, and began reading at verse 23. 14 and 23. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed uh -huh. that the field bringeth forth year by year. Read. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. Now he said you shall eat before the Lord in the place that he choose to put his name there. Go ahead, read. The tide of thy corn, uh -huh. of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, uh -huh. that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Go ahead. And if the way be too long for thee. Now if the place that the Lord chose to put his name, it said if it be too long, Long for thee. Go ahead and read. So that thou art not able to carry it. So whatever it was that you wanted to bring before the Lord and you are not able to carry it, then this is what you could do. Go ahead and read. Or if the place be too far from thee, uh -huh. which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, read. when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, uh -huh. then shall thou turn it into money. See what it said? When the Lord thy God has blessed thee, then you could take that whatever it was that you wanted to bring, and you could turn it into money. Go ahead and read. And bind up the money in thine hand. And bind up the money in your hand. Read. And shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And then go on to the place that the Lord chose. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth about. And then you could take that money and bestow it 
For whatever your soul lusteth after. Go ahead and read. For oxen. Well, well maybe your soul lusts for some oxen. Right. Then you could take that money and buy you some oxen with it. Go ahead and read. Or for sheep. Or maybe it lusteth for sheep. So then you could buy you some sheep with that money. Go ahead and read. Or for wine. Or even for wine. Read. Or for strong drink. Or even for strong drink. Read. Or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. Or for whatsoever your soul desire. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. And thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. You shall eat there before the Lord your God and rejoice you and your household. It said, whatever your soul lusteth for, for ox, for sheep, or for wine, or even for strong drink, and rejoice before the Lord. I have to read this all the time because we may have visitors, and I want them to understand that the word of God says okay. Because we say wine. We not, it's not saying that you have to have some. But if that's what your soul lusted after, then the Lord says it's okay. So there you have it, people. The Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of End Gathering, the final feast of the year. And it is all about the gathering of the people of God that will take place at the coming of the Lord. Thank you, and I hope that, uh, that you got some understanding of what you're feasting to. Because you should know and understand what it is that you're feasting to, and not just show up and fill your belly, but understand what it is that you're feasting to.